When Jet the Clown was introduced as the event's first ever original icon in the year 2000, Halloween Horror Nights also featured another character, Dr. Rich Oddfellow. Dr. Oddfellow would return at Halloween Horror Nights 32, 23 years later, with his story more twisted than ever. Building on aspects of the past, expanding the lore of Halloween Horror Nights, a brand new icon, no, a returning icon, would take center stage. But some question whether Dr. Oddfellow was even an icon at all. Hello, my dear friend. Have you come to see the twisted and the broken? Sick and the demented. Have you also come for an immortal elixir? Fans of Halloween Horror Nights often use the word icon in relation to the Universal Studios Halloween theme park event. But what is an icon? What defines them? And do they even still really exist? Oh my. Oh my my child, you seem so afraid. In October 2000, an Orlando newspaper interviewed a character for Halloween Horror Nights 10th anniversary called Jack the Clown. He would be described as the new Halloween Horror Nights icon. Throughout the event, it was said that visitors would encounter Jack, as well as several of his undead friends throughout the park. The event had featured marketing characters, such as the Crypt Keeper and the Mummy, as overlords of the event before. But this would be the first time visitors would witness an original character taking over Halloween Horror Nights. Not afraid of the dark? You don't know Jack. This original clown character was seen in promotional materials, in the commercial, had a show in the park, but what he did not have was his own haunted house. 23 years later, that original character introduced alongside Jack would return for Halloween Horror Nights 32. So before we talk about if he counts as a Halloween Horror Nights icon, let's look at the story and history of Dr. Oddfellow. Little is known about the early years of Rich Oddfellow, except that he had a strange fascination with souls and dark powers. In 2003, at Halloween Horror Nights 13, a haunted house called Jungle of Doom took those inside to face the curse of bloodthirsty zombies that had trespassed on the ancient burial grounds of Lost Souls. It is in this jungle that our story begins, all the way back in the 1920s. Dr. Oddfellow began as somewhat of an explorer, always interested in souls, immortality, and most importantly, ways to gain power. In the deepest depths of a jungle, its name translated in the local language meaning jungle of doom, he would find a glowing green skull. This skull emitted power, and he knew it as soon as he picked it up. The skull gave him powers to transform and twist the jungle and its inhabitants to attack the people expeditioning within. 
These creatures would carry out his bidding in order to collect their souls. Finding a way to use the skull and the souls to get closer of realizing his dream of having immortality. Oddfellow would begin experimenting with his newfound powers and it would be this green skull that would be used to create the cane of souls and set him on a path of wanting more and more power. After returning to the United States, Dr. Oddfellow would use his twisted creations to create the Carnival of Thrills, where he would display twisted monsters to pay him visitors. It would be here that Dr. Oddfellow would be introduced to a young Jack Schmidt. Born in Shadybrook in the late 1800s, Jack had run away from an abusive family to join the circus, Dr. Oddfellow's circus. Oddfellow took Jack in and they became close, and Jack would be a huge part of bringing success to the Carnival of Thrills as its most popular act. Who doesn't love Jack? In 1939, Oddfellow, still on his quest for more souls to become immortal, would host a carnival in the Midwest. He had been using a mysterious power to gain more power for himself, and had turned some poor victims into freakish creatures of the Zodiac luring more unsuspecting victims for their souls and sacrificing hundreds of visitors in the name of the zodiac signs. Feel the power of your distorted soul. These sacrifices of the victims would increase his power. He covered the carnival in zodiac symbols, burnt the signs saying the carnival name to hide his tracks, and the spilt blood from the sacrifices would please the zodiac deities, granting him his long sought after immortality, as well as control over the zodiac powers himself. As this was happening, an unexpected issue would occur. Jack Schmidt would be having problems of his own. Jack had killed multiple children and the authorities were onto him. The very same night as Dr. Oddfellow was holding his dark sacrifice carnival, Jack would confess to Dr. Oddfellow of his murders. Trying to hide his own sacrifices, Oddfellow did not want more attention and his plans derailed. So he demanded Jack show him where the bodies were kept. Jack took him and revealed chests containing the bodies. To try and cover his heinous acts, Dr. Oddfellow refused to help Jack and instead attacked him. As Jack was struggling against Dr. Oddfellow, the clown reached out and scratched Oddfellow's face, causing some of his blood to fall into the clown. The blood of Dr. Oddfellow, now containing the power gained from the Zodiac that made Dr. Oddfellow immortal, would also make Jack the Clown immortal on the very same night. By accident, yet bonding them together for eternity. Oddfellow's face would forever be scarred from this night forward. Jack would be stuffed inside an oversized Jack in the Box prop and stored within his House of Horrors exhibit. Dr. Oddfellow would later increase his powers even further, acquiring the ability to shapeshift. No matter what form he took, however, the scar Jack left on his face could never be hidden. Dr. Oddfellow needed a place to store all his twisted creations, and that place would be a shipping yard in San Francisco. Creatures he had acquired or created in his horrific experiments would be placed in crates. It wouldn't be long until those monsters would be unleashed, killing everyone working in Shipyard 32. Rather than try and hide the breakout, Dr. Oddfellow would join in with it, using his shape-shifting powers, taking the souls of those who died. By now, Dr. Oddfellow was tired of waiting and wanted more power, as fast as possible. In 1961, he disguised himself as a vampire, Erlo Wolf, to infiltrate a group of vampires. Using a fake background, claiming to be a circus worker whose circus was attacked by vampires in the 1930s, he tricked the vampire council into believing that he was one of them and became part of the vampire hive. In 1968, Oddfellow, still disguised as a vampire, demanded to its leader that the vampires should be allowed to go on a frenzy and feed on whoever they chose. 
Oddfellow, in reality, was looking to gain more power, as usual, over the council and take over the hive completely. Just a year later, Dr. Oddfellow would unleash the vampires on a quiet music festival in upstate New York. Oddfellow hid among them, absorbing the souls of those slain by the vampires into his cane to gain more and more power. No power would ever be enough, and he would never stop. To get more, he returned to Torin in his circus. During the 1980s, a TV production crew covering America's greatest dark rides would come across the remains of Dr. Oddfellow's House of Horrors. Abandoned in a Louisiana junkyard, the crew discovered a wooden music box with the letters J A C K. Turning the handle, they would release the body of Jack the Clown. As it was transported to the local coroner's office on Halloween night, the van crashed and bodies of the crew were found mutilated. Rumors began to spread that Jack had returned from the dead to get revenge on Dr. Oddfellow. In the year 2000, Universal Orlando Resort happened upon and purchased what was left of the House of Horror props during an auction. Halloween Horror Nights would get their first introduction to Jack. Dr. Oddfellow would still be touring. It would be his carnival that guests visiting Halloween Horror Nights 10 in the year 2000 could enter, known as the Fear House, a twisted lab where he showcased experiments and tortured humans. The house featured many clowns and mirrors to disorientate you. It would be those entering that would become Dr. Oddfellow's newest deformed creatures and likely lost their souls. During Halloween Horror Nights 16 in 2006, Jack took up residency at the Shady Brook Asylum. It was there that he discovered Dr. Oddfellow had been a former patient, and not only was he still alive, he was operating Dr. Oddfellow's Dark Carnival and Emporium. Jack would get his revenge, visiting the carnival and killing Dr. Oddfellow once and for all, or so he thought. After he donned Dr. Oddfellow's red and black coat, boots and top hat, and took his prized possession, the Cane of Souls he would unleash his own carnival of carnage. Dr. Oddfellow didn't die as believed, he was just sent back to the Zodiac Dimension, a dimension that those visiting Halloween Horror Nights 32 would soon visit themselves. For 16 years, Dr. Oddfellow continued to twist and gain power within the Zodiac realm, where he learned that if he twisted every Zodiac, he could gather everyone tied to the Zodiac's souls. In 2023, he would escape the dimension. How exactly is unknown. Some speculate it was from the power obtained by his consumption of Alotto's powerful vampire soul. Others say it could be in agreement with Fear Adaru himself, with many of the creatures of Halloween Horror Nights past being direct productions of Oddfellow's experiments. Regardless, he set about reclaiming his cane of souls, finding it when he learned of Jack's immortality and the magic box he had been forced back into. Who wishes for immortality? <laughs> Dr. Oddfellow would then send out a call to all, promising immortality. It is that immortality that brings you into the horrors that await you at Halloween Horror Nights 32, where you can follow Dr. Oddfellow's path and hopefully gain immortality for yourself. For years, he had seen you shaking in fear, yet begging for more, worshipping those who stood before him, doctors, directors, and even clowns. When you arrived at Halloween Horror Nights 32, Dr. Oddfellow didn't want your worship. He wanted, and even promised, to offer you power and immortality. It was now our turn to follow the doctor's path and see what power awaited. In reality, we will never get that immortality. We will only feed his power and make Dr. Oddfellow stronger. Go now, my friend, and see the creatures waiting for you. Now, some of you may not survive the night, 
so do try to enjoy your time. <laughs> So, is Dr. Oddfellow an icon? Dr. Oddfellow is the newest, or perhaps the oldest, Halloween Horror Nights original character story. Universal Orlando and the team behind Halloween Horror Nights have taken aspects of the lore, the history of the event, and woven them into a story that expands upon what we knew. And you know what? They didn't really have to. There is no other temporary event in the world that exists that has itself become so iconic that it features its own interweaving story and cast of characters that continues to grow. What is a Halloween Horror Nights icon? Do they need to be featured in a house, in the commercial, conduct the opening ceremony, sit in a scare zone talking to guests? You can debate who and who isn't an icon all day. In reality today, it is none of those. The icon characters were originally created to market the event, to bring you into the world of Halloween Horror Nights where some years you would not even find that character at all within. Some years they would not be on the marketing, others they would. Some have not been seen since, yet are still talked about today. Some wouldn't have a house, others would. But all of them, in one way or another, connected to fans of the event. If a character connects with you, if it means something to you at an event that we all love, it can be considered an icon. If you see a character and you want to know more about it, if you want to have your picture taken with it, or if it just means something special to you, then it is an icon. And it doesn't matter today what defines a Halloween Horror Nights icon. One thing is for sure, the event is iconic and the stories that are built new every single year are iconic also. For some, at their first time into the world of Halloween Horror Nights, they entered the gates and saw the Pumpkin Lord greeting them into a new world of horrors. And that is a feeling that we all felt with a character at Halloween Horror Nights on our first visit, making them iconic. From Jack, to David S. Pumpkins, to Chucky, and even Little Boo, who you consider an icon is the characters you connected with. For me, Bill and Ted will always be icons of the event. There is no real definition of what an icon is or what an icon has to be. There is no pattern or amount they have to be featured at the event. What began from a newspaper calling Jack the Clown an icon of the event has evolved just like Halloween Horror Nights and its stories within. Dr. Oddfellow's story is incredible. The fact he is weaved throughout the park, taking a story that began in the year 2000 and bringing it to the event 23 years later has to be celebrated. Halloween Horror Nights itself is now the icon. And for those coming to the event for the first time, or those who have been coming for decades, I can't wait to be there with you and see what new or returning icon characters we will see in the future. Those characters we all connect with, and those we connect with individually, all deserve to be icons. And they are. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Haunts. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. What Horror Nights characters are iconic to you? Let me know in the comments below. Follow us on social media for updates on upcoming episodes and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time. <laughs>